Welcome to the Apostolic Encounter with the General Overseer of Top Ministries International, Rev. Osei Wusukovna. Sit back to enjoy the message. Kindly share this message to bless others. We bless the Lord for another opportunity to be at His feet. We welcome you in the house of the Lord, and we want to celebrate and give him praise. Today, we want to be discussing a very interesting subject, marriage supper of a lamb, marriage supper of a lamb. It's one of the big things in scripture, and we want to look at it very carefully. Let's get into the scriptures. Revelation 19, and then let's start from the verse number 7. Revelation 19 from verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of a lamb is come. And his wife have made herself ready. There are a few things I want you to take note of. He said the marriage of a lamb is come. The marriage of a lamb is come. And his wife have made herself ready. It's talking about the time. And it's also talking about the wife who had prepared herself. Then let's get to the verse 8. And, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in white linen, clean and white. For, he, for the white linen is the righteousness of the saints. Amen. The white linen is what? The righteousness of the saints. And Nine, let get to the nine. And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And these are true sayings of God. Right, right. <laughs> blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, Right, these are true sayings of God. We have all been called into the marriage supper of the Lamb because the law have said he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants all people saved and finally come to the state where they will be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. But then there are many things we have to look at today. The invitation is given out by people who are preaching the gospel, announcing of the coming of the Lord, announcing that all men should repent and believe in him, that they can be saved. For there is no other name given among men by which we can be saved than Jesus Christ. So we go about preaching. You hear and you meet young men and women all over, preaching everywhere, declaring the counsel of the Lord, that all men will know and come to the knowledge of, a, of salvation. We, we, when you read Matthew 22 and then verse 1. Matthew 22, 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. 22, the invitation goes on. Jesus gave another parable. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, uh -huh, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. Hallelujah. A second, and he sent for his servants to call them that were hid, bidding to the wedding. And they would not come. You see many are invited. Almost all people are invited to come. The first offer went to the Jews. But they would not come. Let's get to the verse 4. And four of other servants saying... Tell them which are bidding, Behold, I have prepared my dinner thing, and my fatlings are killed, and all things are made ready. Come unto the marriage. Hallelujah. I have prepared all, all things. The Lord has prepared all, all things. Yes, He has prepared all things, and He wants us to come and be at the dinner. But then, there are many who give excuses. Many, many, many go tell them. But they give excuses. And it's interesting the type of excuses they were given. 
Why? Someone will say, I'm married. Some will say, oh, I'm going to for my business. Others went to their farm. And all those things went on. Why? They give reasons and excuses. But they said, I have prepared. And, and, and they will not come. Why? Yeah, they will not come. That's it. They did not value it. It's one of those things. Just like one of the events that have happened. Praise the Lord. Men and women are making excuses all over. The reason why they cannot come today, the reason why they cannot give their life to the Lord. But the invitation is given unto all. But the Bible said, Blessed are those who are called into the marriage supper of the Lamb. Why? And he said, that <laughs> When you read that passage, wow. The wife is making herself ready. He had made herself ready. Mm. Amen. Now let's move on. So as the excuses are going on, the Lord is urging us to go out there and preach the gospel, making him known. And as we preach, there is a question. When you read Matthew 24, Matthew 24, 42 and then 44. Matthew 20, 24. Matthew 24. Watch therefore, ye know not what hour your Lord do come. We don't know the exactly time, the exact time he will come. Therefore, be ye also ready. The word I want to underline in your scripture is all. Well, be ready for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Hallelujah. When you are not looking for him, he, the Bible says he will come like a thief in the night. You may not be expecting him, but you got to be ready. And you got to put up your garments ready. And then you are ready for him. If you are not ready, you won't make it. Hallelujah. There are a few things we're going to examine in the scriptures today. How are they called? The first question is, how are they called? When you read Romans chapter number 10 from verse 13, Romans 10, 13. There are many who are not ready. But Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever. The invitation is for everyone. Whoever will come and believe and call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? I want you to understand that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how then shall they? How would they? How would they hear without somebody preaching to them? Hallelujah. Brother, sister, hear me. You are that brother, you are that sister who must preach Christ and make him known to the others. You have been saved, yes. But you must bear witness of him. So we are announcing everywhere that Christ is the Savior, the Messiah, and he is coming again. And we want to encourage everybody to be ready. By the time he will come, you may be ready. Hallelujah. Mm. How, how are they? Or they how shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? As we preach and as men turn their, their heart to the law, they are saved. Hallelujah. This is the only way unto salvation. For it does no other name given among men by which we should be saved. And we need to understand that we need to preach Christ to the world. Now let's move on. And as therefore we preach, what happens? What next? When they believe. When you hear the gospel of the law and you believe, you are ready to be saved. And when you save, things happen. Hallelujah. In fact, the Lord will do something and it's very unique. Men and women are sent everywhere to preach the gospel of Christ. We go out there and we are preaching. And when we believe something happened, what happened next? What happened is very simple. They asked Peter and said, what shall we do? 
what shall we do? And he said, repent and believe. You need to repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. When you repent and you believe on Jesus Christ, you will be saved. And Jesus, the scripture said in Acts chapter number 2 and then verse 37, it said, Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And verse 38 says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now listen. The truth is this. When you hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and you repent from your sin, you receive remission of sins. I want you to know there's a difference between remission of sins and atonement for sin. Atonement was a, it, it, was a picture of in the New Testament. It was a, a, a covering where every year, once every year, the high priest would enter into the holiest of holies and share the blood at the mercy seat. And make an atonement for the sins of the people. Why? Because the blood of bull and goats do not remove away sins. It was only like this, he will just cover it. So he needs fresh blood every year to atone for the sins of the world. But when Christ died, he entered once and for all into the holiest of all in heaven. And he paid a price for us, for our sin at the mercy seat. He shared his own blood and redeem us. He died for the sins of many. And anyone who repents receives forgiveness of sin. In the presence of the Lord, he has shed his blood and taken away the sins of all men. Anyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sin from him. Hallelujah. And that is not all. You see, when you receive remission of sin, it means your sins have been forgiven and God is not keeping record of your sins again. And now, something also happened. The believer received his conscience purged because the difference in the Old Testament and in the New Testament is simply this. In the Old Testament, those who went to worship every year as they come with their sacrifices, their sins were not removed away from them. They knew they were still sinful. But in the New Testament, your conscience is paid by the blood. When you read Hebrews chapter number 9 and then verse number 14. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself with our sport to God, pay your conscience from that where to serve a living God. It is the washing of the blood and the spirit that paid our conscience from that where for, to serve a living God. So we see the blood of Jesus Christ. Taking care of our sins in the presence of our Lord. And as we believe here on earth. The blood and the spirit of God. Also works on us. And our conscience is purged. And we have been set free and made whole. And I know. I have been set free. And my sins are forgiven. What next? What next is that. When you believe and your conscience is pe- and you have been set free, something also happened again. When you read 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and then verse 7, 21, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. It's interesting, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For he has made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Listen. There is a transaction who took place at Calvary's cross. Jesus Christ, the son of God, decided to die for the sins of us. He paid the price of the sins of all humanity. And anyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sin. And then there is a transaction. He takes away your sin. And gives you the garment of righteousness. It is the gift given to us. Hallelujah. It's very, very fundamental and very important. When, if you consider the marriage supper of the Lamb, you will understand this. This is ha- what happened. When you believe, your sins are taken away, 
and then you receive garment of righteousness. We have received the garment of righteousness. And we know it is not by works which we have done. But by his own grace he saved us. Hallelujah. And once we know this. And we receive the garments of righteousness. Then it means we need to walk in righteousness. You have that white garment. Without spot. And then you are going to leave. With that garment. You are holy. Accepted in the presence of God. You approach God uncondemned. Why? Because your sins have been done away with and thou have received the garment of righteousness. And so when you say you are righteous, people, ah, they don't understand. Brother, the truth is that when I repented, my conscience was purged. And I also received the garment of righteousness. And I know it. And I believe it. And I walk in righteousness. But listen, because I have a clean conscience, anytime I commit sin, I got to know it. Hallelujah. So I get back to the cross. I get back to the blood and plead for forgiveness and cleansing. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean every day you go in there, you confess your sin. Every day you confess your sin. No, no. Or you are thinking about your sin. No. But you have a conscience which is purged and your heart is made clean by the washing of the blood and by the spirit. Once you get to know this, then you leave. When you commit sin as a believer, you will know it and then you turn away from, from your sin and say, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. He was forgiven because the blood of Jesus Christ is continually cleansing us, preparing us. It is the blood. Oh my goodness. Let me use it literally so that you can get it. It's more like a laundry. The blood is the laundry that will cause us to be washed and to be cleansed. Anytime we fall into sin and we accept it. But the problem is that when people commit sin, or when we commit sin, we try to hide it and try to justify it and give reasons for it. No, you, you have committed sin, and God knows you have committed sin, and you know it. You are giving reason for who? The right thing to do is you accept your fault, repent, and be washed and cleansed. The reasons given to men to justify your position does not change your sin. All the excuses and the reason you give will never do away with the sin, the, the fact of the sin. It is only the blood of Jesus Christ that brings bring the cleansing power of our law into the believer's life. And if you want to justify yourself, you cannot be forgiven. But when you admit your fault and repent, then you will be forgiven. Hallelujah. So now, but you see, the assignment we have is that we have got a garment of righteousness. And the Bible says, as a white learning, it is as the garment of the saints. We are supposed to keep this garment pure and holy. And to appear before the Lamb for the marriage supper of a Lamb. If you will not keep your, your garment pure and make it holy, and then be ready at that time. When if you appear there, come on. Let's get to the scripture. Let's look at what somebody who came to the to the wedding unprepared and he was sacked. Yes. And if you come with no garment, ah, you'll be done away. You'll be cast out. Let's get to Matthew 22. And let's look at the verse number 12. Mm. Matthew 22. And he said unto them, friend, how comest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? <laughs> and he's, he, he was speechless. Let me tell you something. How cometh thou, friend, if you are going to defy your garment, or you come without a garment? Brother, I want you to know that this is a formal wedding. Uh, you cannot just wear anything. It's a formal wedding. You are the bride. The bridegroom are all by his own blood. He has purchased your garment of righteousness and given you that garment to put it on. And he said the wife is made herself ready. If you walk in sin and spoil that white garment given to you and then you will come here, you will be cast out. If you have no garment, if you have no 
garment of righteousness, you will be cut out. Listen, so we are say you will go to heaven. Yeah, going to heaven. You repent and then your sins will be forgiven. You are accepted. You come into the church, you are a member of a church. But it is not it is not enough. Being a member of a church, being born again, being filled with a spirit. Let's raise the bar. We have an assignment and responsibility. We are going to appear before the, the Lamb for that glorious wedding. And the dressing is former. Say with me, former. Former. This is former wedding. We all have the same garment of righteousness from Christ. And we are supposed to walk in this garment holy and pure. And as we come before him, if we are not ready, we will be cast out. Hallelujah. Uh-uh. So you hear the word ready, ready. What the word ready? I'm born again. You are born again, yes. But you are given a garment of righteousness. You need to put up that garment of righteousness at the time when you are entering into the presence of the Lord. You may be a Christian born again, spiritual tongue talking. Because we make a lot of noise, you know. Hilabo, yakaba, baba, baba. Listen, it is not the tongue that will take you for the wedding. Oh, oh hallelujah. We're talking about the garment of righteousness. When you read a study, please, I want you to study the scriptures given to you. When you read Revelation chapter 19 and verse 7 to 9, let's go back to it. Revelation 19, 7 to 9, let's read it again. Let's look at the text. Because you, you know we'll gross over many things. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of a lamb is come. And his wife is made ready herself. He have made herself ready. You have made what? Yourself ready. Uh-huh. You see, because when you're reading a James, like, he will come here and you are not ready. Uh-uh. The wife is not made herself ready. But this time he said, the wife has made herself all ready. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of a lamb is come and his wife is made herself ready. Are you ready? Are you putting on that white garment? Is it spotless? Yes. He's coming to take us home with that spotless. You say, our righteousness is not based on what we ever did. Neither can we improve upon that type of righteousness. It is a gift from God. Come on, let's read. Let's get to the verse 8 and 9. And then let's go to... Mm -hmm. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in white linen, clean and white, for the white fine linen is the righteousness of the thing. That is the righteousness we received at birth when we came to the law. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but what? Well, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. When we came to him, we received it by faith. That day, there was joy full in your heart and you have the peace of God. That day, you put on the garment of righteousness. It is at birth. When you were born again, you received that garment of righteousness. Hear this statement. But you cannot even improve upon that because it is a gift, a package given to you. Conscience paid, sin taken away, blood bought. Come on. You are clean and the spirit is working in you. This is the garment you have put on as a saint. And when you walk in sin, your own conscience will judge you. But you still have the blood. Who, you, are, you turn to the Lord and your sins will be forgiven and you are clean. Now, let's move on. Let's get to the Romans chapter number 5 and then let's get to the verse 17. Romans 5, 17. Very interesting. Mm, mm. Romans 5 17. For if by one man sings, death reign by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gifts of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Listen. Abundance of grace and what? The gifts of righteousness have been given to us. You have it. So you have that garment of righteousness and then you need to walk in righteousness. You, uh, and that garment of righteousness will give you access into God's kingdom everywhere you want to go. 
you are righteous, you are holy, you are right. But if you live anyhow, uh uh-uh, that garment of righteousness will be spotted. Unclean, 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 all over. You walk in sin and your own conscience is holding you guilty. Hallelujah. But thank God for the blood. Anytime. The Bible said, First John chapter number 1. He said, if we say we have not sinned, we deceive ourselves. But if you confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Thank God we wear the white garments of righteousness. So if we spot <laughs> the stains found in our garment, he said he will cleanse us and make us whole. We will be cleansed by the blood. We will be cleansed and turned away from it. Now let's move on. But then, if you are not ready you will be rejected at the wedding. Now let's let's move on. Let's read the scripture. Mm. <laughs> this one is serious. Twenty-two, mighty twenty-two, and then verse number fourteen. Mm. Zokomo shaliba. For many are called, but few are chosen. In fact, when you read the thirteen, let's get to the thirteen. Friend, <laughs> from the twelve and thirteen. Let's start from the truth so you get the whole story. Uh huh. And he said unto them, Friend, how comest thou in Hida, not having a woman wedding garment? And he was speechless. That gets it, 13. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay. For many are called, but few are chosen. You see, there are some of the phrases we read and then we just let it go. Listen. Many are called to the marriage supper of a lamb. Many are called into the faith. But as to enter into that dinner, uh, that marriage supper of a lamb, it said the bride must put on what? The garment of righteousness. It is the garment of a say, And you need to be clean. Spotlessly clean. That means you are, you are coming through the blood. You have been cleansed. You have been washed. And then you stand uncondemned. And there will be that day. Many will be cast out. If you don't believe it. Read. Matthew, tw- Matthew chapter number 25. It talks about the ten virgins. Five of them. <laughs> Have no oil in their lamps. In the same picture being portrayed here. They will be ready. They will come. They are Christian. They will come in. But they are not ready for the marriage supper of a lamp. I want you to understand that many Christians will not make it. Why? You, you put on the garment spotted. The reason why Jesus has delayed. Is that not that many people are not confessing Christ? Who? It is that many people are not ready. Spotted. You live your Christian life anyhow. But today, I want you to know, examine yourself and be ready and be washed and be cleansed and make sure you are pure. That any time you will come, the garment of righteousness is there. That, I tell you, that wedding is for my wedding. It is not you walk with anything. No. The garment given you by the bride himself, by, by the bridegroom, his own blood have redeemed you. His own blood have cleansed and washed you. And he has given you a garment. So you need to appear before him very pure and holy. You need to appear before him or you will be cast out. Hallelujah. The truth is this. These are not the type of measure you hear now. It's not very popular. It's not very common. But I want you to understand. It is time to be ready. It is time to be ready. Anywhere you hear about the coming of the Lord, it will talk about be, re- be ready, be ready, be ready. Which way? Wear your garment of righteousness. Be ready. If you are walking in sin or living in sin, get to the blood and be cleansed and washed. If you are a believer and then you are not living right, what does that mean? It means you are not obeying the scriptures given to you. You are not obeying. Because to be a disciple indeed means you are obeying God's word and instruction. 
The, what the Bible says, if you are not obeying, it is time to repent and turn away from your sin and your own ways and come back to the basic. Genuine repentance with a pure heart, willing to make heaven ready, you have your goals set. It is not you have money, you have that. We have a formal invitation by the Lord Himself to appear before Him, and we need to appear the unspotted. That is a standard for the church. That is where we are going. That it should be our dream and goal. The things we need here and the things we use here, we will not carry them along. With that pure heart, blah, blah, cleanse and pay, conscience clean, and a righteous life, turning away from all evil and sin. So, are there many righteous? You may not know them. There are thousand and one. Many of them around. Hallelujah. But you examine yourself and be ye ready. That's the scripture. Be ye ready. Be ready. Matthew 24, 44. Be ready. For you don't know the hour or the time when your master will appear. Be ready. Anytime the trumpet will sound, you are ready to go. Anytime he will call, you are ready to go. But if you neglect these basic things and you do not examine yourself, why is it say we should be ready? Because we are human. We are in this weak body, this flesh and blood. We can even fall into sin. We can be trapped and evil. But listen, the blood of Jesus is still there. While we are alive and have good health, we can turn to it and we will be forgiven. I want to be praying for you now. It is time to receive the Lord. It is time to turn away from your sin. It is time to believe the truth of the word. And let the Lord bless your life. May you be turned away from your own ways. And may you hold on to the gift of righteousness. May you put on this garment spotless and clean and be ready to meet, oh, your Lord. Be ready. You are blessed are those who are invited and who are coming into this marriage of a lamp. They are those who are dressed in white robe, learning, pure, uncondemned. Hallelujah. Sir, I don't know how to work. You don't work it. You believe it. When you believe, the Lord himself will give you that garment. It's a gift from God. It is not by the works you do. It is by believing in Jesus and turning away from your sin. You are clothed in the realm of a spirit. You put on that garment. You cannot get it in any store. It is coming from the Lord himself. But when there is a genuine repentance from your heart and turning away from your evil way, now you will receive it and you will get to know your sins are forgiven. That shall we pray. Pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I come to you just as I am. Lord, be merciful to me and save me. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Lord, cleanse me from every sin and every guilt. Oh God, I want to appear before you holy. In the holy garment given to me. Any sin that easily beset me. My God. Any besetting things Lord. Deliver me from it. And help me oh God. To walk in righteousness. May I wear this garment of righteousness to appear in your presence. Lord I want to be ready. I want to be ready. That moment at that wedding I want to be ready this is my desire this is my cry help me Lord that I'll walk in righteousness help me Lord that I'll keep this garment pure uncondemned help me Lord that I'll overcome every weaknesses of the flesh help me Lord that I'll overcome every challenge of the enemy I bless you for the grace given to me for it is by abundant grace and the gift of righteousness that will bring me into your presence. I thank you, Lord, that thou have given to me freely. I honor you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Brother, be ready. Be ready. For you don't know the hour. But be ready and put on that garment of righteousness when he appears. You can meet with him. God bless you.
Amén. Thank you for having time with the General Overseer. You can follow Reverend Russell Kobana on social media for prayers and counseling. Please call plus 233-244-61-4965. Thank you and God bless you. See the